haven't really done any YouTube videos recently, just mainly because I haven't really been doing any tinkering to speak of recently, particularly over the festive period, but um, this did happen. <laughs> and uh, in this video I'm going to be having a look at this Tascam DA30 Mark II DAT deck. I've also got this thing, uh, which I haven't even looked at yet, it's a Sony uh, PCM800. I think it's basically the same as a Tascam DA88, but it's an 8-track um, digital audio recorder that records onto Hi8 cassettes. Um, as I say, I haven't even powered this thing on yet, don't even know if it works. Hopefully we'll get that going as well, but that's uh, for a future video, I think. But back to the DA30 Mark II. As you can see, it's a bit, uh, it's a bit tatty and a bit, uh, a bit beaten up, this one, but these are apparently quite well regarded, and they do seem to fetch fairly good prices on the second-hand market, so I think it's worth getting this going, um, even though, it's, as I say, it's a little bit tatty, but the uh, problem with it is if we put a tape in, we just get a motor running uh, as it's trying to lace up the tape, um, and eventually we'll get an error message on the screen. Now, it's obviously the, the loading motor's just running, and it's not connected to the loading mechanism in, in any way, so Presumably the, oh there we go, error zero 01. So presumably the belt's just um, either fallen off or disintegrated in some way. Another interesting thing with these machines is if I try and put uh, one of these DDS data cassettes in, it immediately rejects it with error zero 03. So this machine won't let you record, or indeed play, um, audio from these data tapes, which is a bit of a shame because I've got loads of these, they're effectively disposable really because there's so many of them about and uh, the proper audio tapes are not quite as common but um, anyway without further ado let's get the top off and uh, see if we can get this thing working. Now I'm led to believe if you flip it over, power it up and eject the tray if we remove this little front section from the loading tray, it makes it a lot easier to get the mechanism out. So we'll do that. Now apparently, that'll make it a lot easier to get the mechanism out. So let's flip it back over and remove the top cover. Right, let's get you a better camera angle so you can see what's going on in here. So first of all, I'll power it up again. And just uh, try loading a cassette and see what it does. See if we can observe where this motor's running. The head spinning. It's obviously not that, that's the cradle loading motor, isn't it? So we're probably gonna have to get the deck out. Come on, give me my tape back. Right, let's power down. And power down. Now, the first thing I notice is this spring here. That looks like that's going to have to come off. That's easy enough, though. I'm glad I turned the power off because that's fallen straight down into the power supply there. Now, I believe there's four screws. should allow the whole deck to lift out, oh, which it does, except it's snagging on some wires there, there we go, now, are you going to come, yes there we go, and that'll flip right over now, right so let's uh, move the camera, so we've now got the underside of the deck, we've got a little toothed belt here which looks okay, and this little tiny belt here, which I think is the culprit, so and we'll remove that belt. And uh, yeah, oh god, yeah, that's gone all um, that's gone all gooey. That's had it that belt, and it's a tiny, it's a tiny belt, isn't it? That's only about a centimetre diameter, I think. It's just 
completely gone. So there we go. Nice obvious fault. I like that. Now, unfortunately, that's a very small belt. I don't think I've got any that small in stock. If I don't have one, I shall have to order one in. So I think next step, raid my belt collection and potentially order a belt. OK, I had to order a belt because, um, <clears throat> as I expected, I didn't have any that were anywhere near small enough. And um, I did a little bit of um, web searching and the, a couple of references suggested the right size for the belt was 10mm. So I ordered a 10mm belt, but to be honest, that looks too small to me for that. But we'll try and put it on anyway, so let's get this open. There is the belt. See if it'll go on. Oh well. Okay, let's reassemble it. Now there's a couple of other belts in here, but Fortunately, both of those look okay, which is lucky really because this one down here in particular looks quite tricky to change. That sat down quite nicely. I'll just put one screw in just to hold it for the time being while I give it a try keep it in place. I will reattach that spring though because I don't want that floating around. Right, let's give it a try. Moment of truth. Yep, it's laced up. Let's try play. Yep, it's running. And we have the U meter indication. Rewind. Yep, fine. Fast forward. Yep. Play. Yep, running absolutely fine. Now, will it eject? Yep, perfect. Yep, I reckon that's working. So Let's power it down and reassemble properly. And make sure it's still running. Lacing up fine and it's playing fine apparently. Unfortunately, I don't have any DAP tapes that I can actually play to you because they've all got uh, copyright material on. I shall try just out of interest loading this uh, data tape again and see if it still rejects it. Even though I think it will because it wasn't even attempting to lace up with the data tape before. No, it will not let you use a data tape, which is a bit unfortunate. But anyway, there we go. Nice, fully working Tascam DA30 Mark II DAT recorder. OK, I've been doing a little bit of web searching on this, and it seems that the reason these Tascam decks won't accept these data cassettes um, is not specifically because they're um, data cassettes, it's more because it considers the tape in these cassettes to be too thin. 
Now these um, audio DAT cassettes I believe typically contain 60 meters of tape whereas these data cassettes um, often contain 90 meters or sometimes even 120 meters of tape so obviously to fit all that extra tape in the same size cassette the tape has to be that much thinner and these decks consider that tape to be too thin for them to be able to use. So how does the machine tell which thickness of tape you've put in? Well the answer is the little holes on the bottom of the cassette. So if I flip these two over and if we look at the bottom of the cassettes this is the um, normal audio cassette and this is the data cassette we can see there's three little holes along here and I don't know how well it's coming across on the camera but the centre hole on this audio cassette is filled in whereas the centre hole on this data cassette is um, not filled in if you like so apparently you can stick a bit of tape over that hole and then the machine will accept the data tape so I'm going to try that so I'm just going to get a bit of ordinary tape. now this is going to be quite tricky because the cover needs to slide back into that space I'll try and do this quite carefully just cover those holes it doesn't matter that I'm covering the other two holes because they're filled in anyway. So a little bit of tape sticking out there, let's just fold that round. Right, let's now see if the deck will accept that tape. And the answer is yes it will. Ah, but it's now flashing tape when I try and play the tape. so that hasn't fully worked has it? Oh, so it still won't use the tape so that tip doesn't work okay so can I, is there any way tell me in the comments, is there any way of getting these Tascam decks to accept these longer thinner data cassettes thanks for watching